Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're going to go through another really cool uh, Excel little utility that I built. And what we're going to be doing in this case is we're going to be looking at different files that could drop down. So let's let's paint this scenario to see what we're actually going to learn today. So I'm sure some of you guys, when you're actually working within your corporate environments, you have certain Excel files that get dropped into some kind of a shared directory, whether it be SharePoint, whether it be some kind of a shared directory that you have to go ahead and take that information and then upload that into your own version or append it to your own data in order to actually do your analysis for the month or period or whatever it is. So to give you an example, let me just drag over this directory. So I created this directory called drop and you know, this drop here actually contains data from period six. So period six, what I mean by that is currently we have three different departments, grocery, sports, and electronics. We have month one, month two, month three, some companies call it month, somebody, some companies call it period. We're going to call it, call it period for now. And then the actual sales data for that. And what happens is the drop directory here simulates a shared environment where, say, for example, finance will just go and drop the monthly results in there for different people in the organization to go ahead and consume. Challenge is, you know, this is our file called main.py. This is the file that the analyst works out of. So they're going to say, all right, in order for me to complete this analysis for the month of June or up to the month of June, I need to make sure I can get June data in here. And the only way they can get it is if they go ahead and get the data from wherever finance puts that data. Then they may also have a archive. So process will, will have all of your file names from period one all the way to five, which is just basically these three in period one, these three in period two and so forth because they want to keep some kind of a repository of these files. Finance may come and drop them once or twice uh, a month and then delete that directory because they need to keep it for future files. So if this happens to you, which I'm going to assume it happens in almost 95% of the organizations that I've worked with, then this utility is going to do a whole bunch of automation for you and to a certain degree, even automate your analysis. So you may actually go ahead and send this data along with something like a little chart like this onto your different uh, users who are going to consume this data. So I got month one, two, three, four. I've got department as my search criteria over here. And I have everything here from month one to five. And I can go ahead and sort of sift through the different types of directories that I've got here, or so the different types of departments that I've got here. And I want to be able to automate this. I don't want to touch this. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a script in Python that's going to do something very interesting. First and foremost, what it's going to do is it's going to take this drop file. It's going to see whether or not there's a file in here. And if it is, then it's going to process that file. It's going to append it to this Excel spreadsheet and it's going to drop that file in the process directory and delete it from the drop directory. And then all we're going to have to go back here into sheet two is just hit refresh data and everything should be there for you. Now, not only, not only are we going to automate that, we're going to schedule that. So what that means is I can schedule this for every Monday, every Tuesday. I can schedule it to happen every hour, every two hours, whatever frequency I want. And, you know, as we walk through the code, I'm going to go ahead and show you that. But first, let me demo this for you. And so now what I want to do is go ahead and open this file called multiutil.py or myutil.py, sorry. This is the Python code, which I'll go through afterwards. But what I want to do is I want to focus on another thing. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring over the current time right now. Now, what I'm going to be able to do in this case is I can actually tell this program to run at specific times of the day. I can say run every day at, you know, in this case, 931, but I'm going to do like 935 or something like that. Or I could tell this to run on specific days of the week, like Monday or Tuesday, um, run every hour, every other hour, whatever it is. And I'm and here I'm basically telling it to go ahead and recheck this every second. So in order for us to do what I described, I'm going to have this thing run at 935. And what that's going to allow us to do. So hit save. I'm going to go ahead and actually run this. So you're going to see over here that it's actually blank. And that's because right now it's just waiting for the time. It's going and looking against the system. It's checking the time and it's seeing when it's going to be 935. And so the way this code runs is it's going to go ahead and do this entire check. And like I said, we'll walk through the code in a second. It's going to go and see whether or not there's a file in there. If there is a file that's present, it's going to say, okay, good. All files have been processed and it's completed. 
If there is no file in there, it's going to say no new files and it's going to leave it at that. So we're going to give this another couple of seconds and here, like I said, it's going to check every second. You're going to see that it's going to give you the response. All right. So it says all files process. So it should be processed and completed. So let's go to the folder here. So if this worked, this drop folder should be empty, which it is. That's good. Process folder should have period six now, which it does. And now we're going to open up main.xlsx and you see that it has period six in there. We just go back here, hit right click, refresh, and now you actually have your month six data. And the best part is you didn't have to go ahead and import any of this data yourself. It all did it in the background automatically within Python. So now what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this file and I'm going to show you exactly how this code works. And as always, this code is going to be in the description as well. So let's go ahead and see how this works. So in order for this to work, you're going to need a couple of dependencies. First, you're going to need shutil, os, uh, pandas, open, uh, py, xl, schedule, and time. And all of these could be just installed with a pip if you don't have it. So just do pip install, shutil, schedule, and so forth. So in this code, what I did is I actually defined a function. And I said, this is the job that I want to run. And that is defined right here. So it says do job. If this function was called my job, then you would go ahead and just put my job down there. And what this function is going to do is all it checks is it checks the processed file and it checks the, the drop file. It says, so this is just defining the path. So, you know, I have a lot of this just written up here in actual the comments. So I'll let you guys read that. But really, here's where the code really starts. It's saying if there is a file in the drop folder, then let's convert it into a data frame. And these are the specific columns. And the reason why I put this as a data frame, you didn't have to, you could, you know, use Py uh, Excel if you wanted. I just like using pandas a lot and it just made it easy. So I did that. And then the second thing it's going to do is I also said, go ahead and let's also import the main file. And that's the one that had all the different months in there. And the whole reason why I did that is I wanted to count the number of rows that were in the existing file because I wanted to get a baseline of how many rows are in the file before I do any kind of transformation. Then I said, go ahead and open up this book and let's load sheet one. And the reason why I didn't do wb.active and that's something you may see somewhere else is the active. If I did wb.active, what that does is that opens the last sheet that I have used. So if I actually used sheet two, and if I go back to my Excel file, if sheet two was the last one that I actually used, it would start inputting the data here and not on sheet one. And I don't want that. So I said, let's just make sure we keep it to sheet one. And so anything that was opened up in the drop files. So if I did have a drop file that existed, I said, go ahead and create, create a list out of that. So DF dot values dot two list, because remember DF is what I had defined as my drop files data frame. And then append through every single one of them and, the, and then write it to my actual workbook, in this case, which was main.xlsx. The next thing I did is I said, okay, now that I've saved it, let's close it and let me reopen it and initialize a new data frame out of it because I wanted to see what the new shape was now. And so for example, what that means is that if I originally had 15 rows, now I added three rows to it. I want to make sure that this actually has 18 rows. And I said, if the new rows, which is this here, is equal to what I had originally, plus whatever I added, we're good to go. If new rows was some other random number, that means that not everything got copied over properly. In which case I said, let's go ahead and move the file, which is my drop file here. So that would be period six into the new processed folder, because that's what I wanted to do. And then print all files complete. Now, if the drop files didn't have any file. This is where it says else print no new files. And then you go ahead and you wrap all of this into one function. So this all gets defined under job. And now this is where the second part of the command starts. And it says, now we're going to start scheduling it. So I'm going to say schedule dot every dot day at this specific time, or you can do Monday, Tuesday. And if you want, you can just go and look at schedule as the module on pypy.org. And you should be able to find a little bit more about that. And while this is pending, let's make sure we go ahead and check it every second. And that's what the time command is there for. So very handy, very simple, very small, very lightweight little program here that allows you to do a whole bunch of automation in Excel, takes away the grunt work of having to go ahead and pull files, opening it, copying, pasting it into different into your main file or whatever it is in this case, 
and it just takes away that burden you don't have to worry about that anymore all you really have to do now is right click and then refresh and then you're good to go so a lot of application to this and you know this is just me using a small example can you imagine having scenarios where you have you know a thousand two thousand rows or you have multiple different folders that you want to pull that from you can always just create a new list of all the different folders that you want to actually go ahead and look into so if you create a list of folders you can say sift through that list of folders every time and apply this job function to it from that perspective and so I wanted to keep this as simple as possible so that whether you're new or whether you're experienced with Python this is something you can use all the time so I encourage you to take the grunt work out of your work automate as much as you can and start with something like this so if you guys like this please hit that like button please hit that subscribe button and I will talk to you next time thanks very much and have a great day bye bye